to vlogmas so for today's video i'm gonna be doing crisscross knotless braids so i'm starting off by simply detangling her hair her hair is permed here and it is um recently washed so i'm just going through with a hair dryer and a white tooth comb to basically get it to a more manageable texture because the roots are a little bit thick so I'm just going through that with the hair dryer to make it softer. When I go with confidence, when I go all the way around your hips and touch by sip on it, take a trip on it. When I go, you can go slow, bind it up on night. Now that I've tried it down, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the actual knotless braids. I'm not gonna go too in depth on knotless braids because I do have a tutorial, but I'm just gonna give you guys the basic steps. So, first, I'm gonna part out the section that I'm gonna be braiding down. I'm gonna be using my soft touch wax. I prefer the green jar, but today I use the blue one because that's the one that I could find. So after detangling, I'm basically gonna go ahead and separate the hair into three pieces. This is basically your base for your braids. And to get a knotless braid, you're gonna start the braid with the client's natural hair. So you're not gonna add any braid yet. You're gonna do about one or two braids before you start adding um, the actual hair. And the hair that I'm gonna be using today is expression braiding here for the specific length i cut a pack of 84 inches into two so that gives us about 22 inches thereabout Anywho, after i have basically created the base that's when i'm gonna start adding the hair um if you already have previous knowledge of how to do a regular braid then this should be easy for you um all you have to do is just add the expression braiding here or whatever braiding here that you're using to the braid that you have created and just keep adding more braid until you've reached the desired thickness and length that you're going for i'm gonna go ahead and repeat the steps one more time just so you guys can you know get the concept and see it at a better angle so of course i'm gonna go in first with the soft touch wax i'm gonna spread that all over the client's hair because it, i want it to be as sleek as possible then i'm gonna go in with my rat tail comb and i'm basically gonna comb the hair through once more this just allows the wax to spread i'm gonna go ahead and split that section into three equal parts and just to kind of explain if you don't know how to do a regular braid i'm gonna try to explain it to you basically for the three pieces you're going to take the piece on the right hand side you're going to bring it under the middle piece and bring it over top the piece on the right so that's basically how you create a braid and you want to grip the hair as tightly as possible so that the roots would be nice and neat and of course the style will last much longer so if you need to pause the clip reverse the clip slow down the clip whatever you need to do to get the hang of it you can go ahead and do that but after basically creating the first braid or the first two braids you're gonna go ahead and add a piece of braiding here i like to add the piece of braiding here to the opening that's gonna be on the right hand after you have done your first braid and i'm gonna repeat the same exact steps in order to basically braid the hair so i'm just gonna continue braiding it down and each time that i feel like it's not thick enough or you know i need to add more length then i'm just gonna add additional hair so that the braid is basically you know how i want it to be
you guys so after we've basically finished our knotless braids as i said this is not an in-depth tutorial on the knotless portion more so we're focusing on the crisscross pattern so now at the front and you want to you don't want to leave out a lot of hair at the front because it's just gonna kill the style what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna section off a piece of hair and of course when i'm you know making my parts i always make a rough part and you know go over that with the wax it just makes the part so much more crispy so much more neat you know just gives it a nice sharp look and i think this is what takes me the most time when i'm you know doing a style is just trying to neaten my parts so sometimes i end up going over it like two three four five times until it's the right size and shape and everything now i'm not working with any specific shape i'm just you know doing it um across and of course, after, you know, making my part, I'm going to go ahead and base the root of the area that I've parted out. I'm going to base that with wax and then I'm going to split that section in two. So that's going to be the first two pieces of hair. Then I'm going to repeat this, the same steps for the exact same size um, right beside that first section. So that's going to end up being the first four sections. So in other words, this is going to be the first crisscross. So I'm also going to split that area into two parts. So now you guys can clearly see four sections. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wax to base the front portion because that's where you need to basically, you know, secure first. So I'm using a toothbrush just because it's going to make it a whole lot neater. I don't want any flyaways. I want everything to look nice and neat. So I'm using the toothbrush or you can use an edge brush, whichever you like, to just get everything nice and smooth. And then when I have done that, I'm going to be taking a small black elastic band to hold it into place. So what you want to do, as I mentioned before, you want to secure the first two front ones you don't want to start securing the ones at the back yet so secure the first so to get the crisscross first we're gonna secure the first front ones I mean, you can do it one at a time but um you can secure the first two at the front and basically after you have done that what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the same um black elastic bands unless you're doing color you're gonna take the same black elastic bands and the area that you have secured at the right from the front you're going to secure that to the left at the back so the first cross the first um area that you have secured at the front to the right you bring it to the left and vice versa so the area that you'd have secured at the left you bring it to the right at the back and that is how you're basically going to get your crisscross braids and this guys is the simplest part of the style the knotless portion is what takes the most time. Doing the crisscross is literally so beginner friendly, so easy, and so quick to do. Alright you guys, so just in case that was too much to take in all at once, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it once more so you guys can see again. 
So we're starting off by sectioning off the area that we're going to be using for our crisscross pattern. Um, of course, I'm going to go over that with wax and I'm going to keep going through it with my rat tail comb until I am satisfied with the parting. Then I'm going to also put the first side out of my way. This is optional, just but it's just so I can, you know, handle the hair easier and then i'm gonna start by sectioning off the first half into two pieces i'm gonna be using my soft touch wax and a toothbrush you can use an edge brush just to slick the um the hair at the front into the first section just so it's nice and neat and we don't have any flyaways after that is done we're gonna connect that piece to the opposing side at the back so if you did the left at the front first you connect it to the back at the right and vice versa <laughs> pretty much optional but i wanted to add some color and the elastic bands that i have they weren't really the strongest so i did use a black elastic band as the base and then i'm gonna go over that with a colored elastic band so i'm just doing that for the two at the back in the second set of crisscross so as i said that's optional you don't really have to do that but yeah all i have left is just to connect the last crisscross or x and then we're basically gonna start you know adding the braids to the end so i'm gonna walk you guys through that step as well So by now you should have at least your first section of crisscross if you were following um, the tutorial. Now I'm going to start by doing the knotless on the ends of the crisscross. Now you want to bear in mind that you're actually going to do braids after you do the crisscross. So when you're thinking about sizing, please take that into consideration. But you're basically going to repeat the same steps that you did for the knotless at the back. You are going to start with the client's natural hair. You're gonna make one braid or you can do up to two or three braids then you're gonna start adding hair to your desired thickness and length and you're gonna you know just braid that as tightly as possible so it's nice and neat the tighter you braid the less trimming you'll have to do because you'll have less flyaways so just take that into consideration and it, it looks a lot better if the braids are tight especially if you're doing not less braids so yeah that's what i'm doing right now just gonna go ahead and keep adding here until it's as thick as I want. This hair is um around lower back length. You guys aren't gonna see the full length because you know your girl is short and she's tall, so I wasn't able to you know capture it the best way possible. But 
just to give you guys an idea it's around butt length you guys know me i have to demonstrate it twice so this time we're gonna do another braid so i'm gonna do one braid first then i'm gonna add the expression braiding here and as soon as i add that here i'm gonna just start working on thickness and length so that's why i'm adding additional pieces of hair but yeah that is basically the steps on how you know you get your crisscross knotless braids from this point onward it's just you know basically repeating steps for regular braiding it might look difficult but i promise you it's not especially the crisscross portion it is really the simplest part of the style if you can do knotless then you can do this or if you can braid in general then this is going to be easy for you Alright guys, so now I'm just going in with my scissors and I'm just going to trim away all of the flyaways that I have. Remember, if you're braiding tightly, then you won't have that much, but it always looks a lot better if you just go in and clip away any excess hair sticking out that you might have, especially if you are adding hair to get your desired length, then you might have a couple of flyaways. Um, this part isn't hard either. You just have to make sure that you don't cut the braid because let me tell you girl i have had times when i have accidentally cut the braid and it's the worst because you're gonna have to do that all over again because it's really hard to like you know fix the braid you have to literally take it all the way out so you want to move kind of fast but at the end of the day you still don't want to cause any mishaps so you also want to take your time and do it properly when the trimming is complete you're gonna dip the ends in hot water as hot as your client can you know manage the steam and whatever this just allows the ends to look nice and straight and it gives this flowy feel to the braids like it gives it movement i don't know how to explain it but it just looks a lot better if you dip it in water as i said as hot as the client can take it and you want to dip um all the way up you want to dip as far up as the water can reach and what I do sometimes is I actually take the towel and I will dip the towel in the water and kind of pull it along the braids or, you know, put it on the top portion where the water isn't, you know, going to be able to get to. But yeah, that's all I'm doing right now. I'm just dipping the hair. You guys know me. I have to do things a bunch of times before I'm satisfied. So I dip for a while then to ensure that the client doesn't you know get burnt i pull the towel along the hair it dries out as much as the water as possible and i'm just pulling the warm towel because it's warm by now it's not so hot anymore and i'm just pulling it along the braids so any flyaways that you forgot to trim up or any flyaways that were too tiny for you to see they will normally go down during that process i'm gonna take the soft touch wax again and i'm gonna do some edges nothing extra just like regular swoops just to make the hair look a little bit more you know vibrant give it that oomph and i feel like hair is just boring without edges so yeah just swooping her edges down i didn't leave a lot of edges out because the worst thing is getting your hair done the stylist leaves a lot of edges out and then when you go home you're not able to do your baby hairs not saying that this is the case for this specific client but you know just to be on the safe side you want to leave out minimal edges so just in case your client isn't able to do them herself or himself they're still able to wear the style without it looking messy so now i'm gonna go in with the final touches and i'm gonna use 
the olive oil sheen spray to give it that um to give it that shine and this is the finished look i just love doing crisscross braids i feel like they look so trendy they look so good and as you guys can tell she was loving the hair as i said guys it's about butt length i didn't get the full length in the video but it's about butt length so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um if you're new here please consider you know subscribing and join the family uh make sure you leave a comment below make sure you like this video share this video and i'll see you guys in my next vlogmas video bye